Praise God, everybody, and welcome to First Baptist Church of Washington Hills Bible Study, where we study God's Word and examine His Word and see how God's Word applies to our life, so that our life, so that we can grow in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're so happy that uh, you guys are out tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made, and truly I'm rejoicing. I'm glad to be a part of this day. It's been a hot one. Amen. 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 But I know the place is much hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Actually, feel good out there, man. I'm glad we are all on our way. Amen. Up the King's Highway. Amen. For those viewing uh, us on Facebook, we invite you to come and help celebrate our Ursus this coming Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to a great, a great time this Sunday. They certainly sure deserve. Amen. Amen. Our, our appreciation for what they do. Amen. It's not standing at the door. It's not an easy job. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you stand with your back hurting and, oh, yes. you know, the shoes that you wear might be a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, yes. But we thank God for our worship. We thank God for every ministry that God has ordained Amen. here at Washington Hills Baptist Church. And we just continue to want to lift everybody up. Had a glorious time this past Sunday at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Amen. We wish them the best as they celebrate the, their pastor's 20 year anniversary, him and his wife. Amen. So we'll be praying for them. Uh, we ask that our Facebook friends continue to join in with us as we lift up our sick and our shut in, uh, especially those that are in, over in Maui, I think it's Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Maui. Uh, those that are still recovering from that. And, and there's a lot of uh, storms and hurricanes and yeah. stuff going on even in the United States. Yeah. Mudslides and stuff. It's a lot of things going on. Amen. 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 A lot of devastation going on and putting people out of the way. Yeah. Destroying homes. You know, people that have put their life savings into a building and it's towed out in one day. And so we certainly be lifting them up in prayer. Amen. I want also want to thank Brother James for filling in for us on last Wednesday. Amen. 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 A powerful message. We are certainly more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. We know that the enemy will come, amen, to try to turn you away, cause you to doubt who you are in Christ. Amen. amen. One of the things that Satan couldn't do with Jesus is, is deter him from who he was in Christ. He said, if you be the son of God turned these stones into bread. So, so he, he knew who he was. We, we got to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Tonight our lesson is going to come be coming out of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1. Did I give you 1 through 11? 1 through 11. I want to read the, just the first four verses of Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. I mean, we're going to be talking about believing in God's saving rest. Right. Saving rest. Mm -hmm. Saving rest. I don't know if you heard about the rest. We rest in Him. Amen. We rest from our labor. And one of these days when, the, when this world can no longer afford us a home, and we go on and meet the master, we will rest from our labor. And I think Sister Murphy sung a song that from labor to reward. Amen. For those who are working with energy in the, in the king for the kingdom, we'll receive a reward when we get there. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, Amen. verses 1 through 11, but we're going to read the first four verses of said chapter. It reads, Let us therefore fear less a promise being left us of entering into his rest, God's rest. And if you should seem to come short of it, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter to my rest, although the works 
were finished from the foundation of the world. For he, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day for all his works. And we, we're going to be teaching on uh, believing in God's saving rest. God save us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to stand to teach your word. We pray, oh God, that your anointing, Lord God, will fall fresh on all of us. Move in a way, Lord God, that ears just pop open, hearts be so open to receive your word tonight. We striving to learn more about your word. We striving to grow more, Lord God, as we travel in this world that we are living in. We want to know more about what you would have for us to do. We want to know more how to present your gospel, your word to those who do not believe. We're living in an unfriendly world, my God, and you know all about it. Don't have to tell you about it because you know all about it. Amen. And Father God, as we wait for the return of Christ, there's so much work for us to be doing. So we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to teach your word tonight. And Father, we thank you for the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Church family. Every ministry that you have ordained, every member that's a part of this sacred church, even those that we haven't seen in a while, their names are on the roll, we pray for them as well. Every sick and shut in, every heart that we know, Lord God, we are praying for them today. We lift up Sister Wade today. Yes. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to strengthen her body where she seemed to be weak. Not only her, but Sister Baker as well. And she She's on the recovering end from another stroke. Master. We know that stroke can take a whole lot out of you, Lord God. And we pray, oh God, that you will strengthen her body. We pray, Lord God, for those who attend to her care. Lord God, that they be, they be more visual about what she needs, Lord God, and, and be there, Lord God, to see what she, she, is, she is needing. And not only her, but we lift up Sister Rebecca today. Her husband says today she's a little bit better, but still a little bit sore. And so, Father, we know that going from surgery, Lord God, and back into the hospital, and, and, and we know our body it takes time for us to recover. The older we get, it, it takes us longer to recover. But we know that, Lord God, that you have a healing blessing that you can touch even now. And you can heal us, Lord God, from all our infirmities. We pray for those that are out tonight. We pray, oh God, that you continue to be with them as they travel to and fro. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Truly, we love you. This is it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Believing in uh, God's saving grace. It, it's just another way of saying it's trusting in God's saving grace. Amen. amen. It means that the born-again believers... Is totally trusting in the Lord by faith. Amen. No matter how uh, much the world that we live in, the things that comes uh, to shake us or the, some surprises that happen in our life, sometimes it is the physical, it's the things that happen to our physical body, sometimes surprises us, or some things that happen to our kids or a friend of ours will kind of surprise us. But we can rest knowing that God would always be there. We can rest in knowing that he says, this is what Jesus said, I never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Amen. That's the kind of rest that we're speaking of tonight. The kind of rest of knowing that no matter what's happening, that you don't have to be torn apart and worrying about what's going to happen. You rest in him. John, uh, John, the, the beloved, always rests on Jesus' bosom. Amen. He, he considered him the one that God, that Jesus loved. He was assured that Jesus loved him. Every time he spoke, he spoke of saying that he's, he loved me. Amen. He, I think he might have seemed to be a little bit selfish, but he just trusted and believed in the love that Jesus had Amen. for him. Amen. And so tonight we're talking about, amen, believing in God's saving rest. He, he saved us from being historical about things that happen in our life. He saves us and comforts us 
Amen. When circumstances seem to be overwhelming in our life, when our children get so uncontrollable or our mates get so uncontrollable, he saves us, he rescues us, he delivers us. Amen. See, so deliver us from all of that and bring us to a place of comfort. Amen. This is talking about his saving rest. Amen. In this chapter here, it's a continuation of chapter 3. Chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews, the writer is trying to convince him. He's trying to convince the Jewish Christians, the Jews who have converted over to Christianity, that Jesus is much more than Moses. I mean, he, he trying to, trying to, he's much superior than Moses. And then not only that, but he's, he's, he's constantly sharing this good news about Jesus, and they are at this point where they still not believing in Jesus Christ. And the reason that, and, and because they don't believe, they have not entered into the rest. And he gives them this example of those who come out of the wilderness would have crossed over into the joy, crossed over into the promised land, but they didn't believe. They believed the negative report from, from, the, from the spies that went to spy out the land. They believed, they believed 10 of them, amen, and two of them, Caleb, Amen. And Joshua, they believed that they could conquer, amen, the 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 the, uh, the, the, the land that flowed with milk and honey, the land of Canaan. But they, the majority of them didn't believe. And what they wanted to do, they wanted to stone Moses and raise him up another captain. And that angered, that angered God. And he cast them into the wilderness, and they, they traveled in the wilderness for 40 days before the nights. And those that was above, I think, 20, amen, they died in the wilderness. They did not enter into the Canaan land because they didn't believe in the Lord. Amen. He used this as an example of entering into the rest. Look at what he says. Let's go right into our lesson in, over in verse 1. He says, let us. And so he included himself within the within the teaching. He says, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into the rest. There is a promise. All of us who have believed in Jesus Christ have received the promise of eternal life. That is a promise. Can't nobody take that away from you. Amen. You didn't earn it. It was given to you. Amen. Amen. Even, even your confession of faith, amen, when you accepted Jesus Christ, amen, it was, it was the faith that he gives you, amen, to believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Faith is not an intellectual thing. Amen. Faith is something that you just believe. Yeah. Amen. amen. In, in fact, Jesus is the author of your faith. Amen. So you believe him. Amen. So when you have this, this belief in Jesus, you can rest, amen, regardless of what's going on around you. You can rest. You can find comfort in Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. But he says in his first verse, he says, let us therefore fear. And what he was sharing with them is because there are some that didn't come to the point of believing. There are some that come that have not accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. There was others who have heard the word, but yet failed to con be converted over to Christianity. They were still kind of cr uh, uh, scrabbling the fence. And we have people like that today. They confess something, but yet they show no signs of being totally converted over to, to the, what they believe. He said, let us therefore feel less a promise. And we have that promise being left us entering to his rest, God's rest, any of you should seem to come short of that. So that's a warning that he shared with them. Amen. And those that are viewing for us on Facebook, that's a warning. The warning going out is that you have to believe, totally believe, amen, in your, the soul salvation that God has provided for you. You have to trust in that. Amen. Even on your dying bed, you got to trust in that. Amen. You, Amen. you just have to trust it. 
Because most people have accepted the Lord as their Savior, but have not fully understand the, all the benefits Amen. that come with being saved. Amen. Even they, they just they walk around empty, even because they don't understand all the benefits that come with being saved. But but the, in the Jews' case, they felt they felt there was something else needing needed for them to be accepted by God. And that word, they felt as if they had to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so they, they struggled. They struggled with the point of believing in grace. Amen. And accepting the law. And so they preferred to keep the law because if they kept the law, they believed that they were standing and standing for God. But no one can keep the law. No human being was able to keep the law. Because if you failed in one, you failed in all. Amen. And so they, so while they was under the law, amen, they felt as if if they strive to keep the law, then God would have been pleased with them. Amen. But the writer is teaching, teaching that under Jesus Christ, up under Jesus Christ, you don't have to keep the law because he has come to fulfill the law. We're under grace today. And when we talk about being under the dispensation of grace, we're talking about God's unmerited favor. The dispensation of grace that we're living in today, God is not just striking us down with lightning. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's given humanity an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Mm -hmm. Back in the of the day, God, God didn't uh, do what he's doing today. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he, he would take them out because they didn't believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. But today, but today we we living in a world today where people really don't believe that there is a God. They don't really believe that there is a hell. And they would argue with you. They would actually argue with you about how can a a, a, a loving God send a person to hell? Amen. I this is the argument that they debate with those who are, are not learned about God's word. And, and God ain't sending you nowhere. You're sending yourself. Amen. Amen. He sent his son into the world, amen, that the world might not be condemned. But those who, who refuse to accept Jesus as Savior is condemned already. Amen. So the promise speaks of God's rest and the warning is directed to those who lack faith. Faith in God's saving, saving rest. Amen. amen. Now, the word rest in, in this chapter carries three different meanings. One rest given is about Israel when they cross over to the Canaan, the promised land. And you find that in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. He said, For you are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God hath given you. But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God give you to inherit, and when he give you rest from all your enemies, round about so that you dwell in safety, then there should be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell. Amen. There, then there shall you bring all the all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes. Look at that. And your tithes. Mm -hmm. And your tithes. Amen. And and heave offering in your hands and all your choice and your, all your choice vows which you vow unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me stop right there. So so when they go across over the promised land, he's going to erect a place for them to worship. And where they're worshiping they're going to cease from war. Amen. But the thing the thing that happened if you read the book of Joshua, they got tired of they got tired of uh, going to war. Mm -hmm. They got tired of clearing the land out of all the heathens, mm -hmm. all the pagans. They got tired. They started complaining to Joshua about going to war, about clearing the land. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the things that was, was it's very interesting when you read the book of Joshua is that every time they went to war, the Lord was with them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like they were fighting a battle by themselves. Yeah. Man, he was, he was actually fighting a battle for them, but they got tired. Mm -hmm. And then he said to them, he said, because you failed to, to uh, clear the land, clear the land of the heathen, they're going to be a thorn in your side. Mm -hmm. 
And from that day on, amen, those nations have always been a thorn to the Jewish nation because they failed to clear that clear the nation out of the heathens and those who come against or didn't believe in God's word. And I'm going to stop and put a pen in if I can just park here because the Lord sometimes, he, he, the Lord tells, gives us a command. He gives us things to do. And, and instead of us doing it, we, we choose to do something else. Amen. And when we choose to do something else, that does that doesn't please God because we choose to do it our way. You understand what I'm saying? And when you fail to do what God has asked you to do, things really don't work out as you planned it to be. Amen. He, he, he tells us to treat everybody right. Treat them fair. He, he tells us that. Right? He says, love one another. Right? He, this is our commands that we give. And I, I know it's hard sometimes to, to love those who mistreat you. And, and talk about you. It's, it's hard for you to do that when they have done things to you. Amen. But you gotta, you got to pray for them. He said, pray for those that spitefully use you. Right. Amen. Amen. And th those are just simple commands we can actually do. He ain't telling you to go party with them. You know, he ain't telling you to invite them to uh, your gatherings. He just say love them. Amen. <laughs> what happens if they show up at your gathering? Uninvited. You sent him away. I said, don't. Oh. <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? Because he would, Lord would try you yeah. to see whether or not you would actually implement the love that he shares with us to love one another. Amen. 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 Let's go, let's go back to verse 2. We're talking about believing in God's saving rest. Verse 2. Look what he said in verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Because they did they being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Amen. Yeah, he just this go on on Sunday morning. When they hear the word, they don't mix it with faith. Trust in what is being shared with them. Maybe, maybe because the, the message might not be a message that pertains to where you at in your life at this particular time, and that could be the case, right? But you you have to trust in, Amen, the gospel that it can benefit you when you when you accept what has been heard. Amen. You believe what you have heard. If it's according to God's word, right? Well, sometimes preachers drift off and we add our own commentary views in there. We, we drift a lot to, to try to make the message kind of interesting to you. But we try to stay on point with it as much as we can. Right? But, but he says the gospel was preached to them and to us but it didn't profit them because they didn't they didn't trust in what they heard. They didn't believe in what they heard. They didn't believe that Christ Jesus was far superior than Moses. And then Jesus actually argued with them about Abraham. Amen. They say Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, Before Abraham I was. Abraham wanted, Abraham wanted to see this, what you are seeing today. He said, your father is the father of life. Which he was talking about saving. You see, in, in, in actuality, what he's, he just, the, the Hebrew writer is actually saying, because you fail to believe the gospel that Jesus is the savior of the world, you, you, are not, you will not enter into his rest. And he's talking about being saved at this particular point. Because they fail to believe. There are so many that comes, amen, and assemble with us on Sunday morning. Some we invite to come, amen, and they hear the word of God. And when the arms of God is open to receive them to himself, many walk away. Amen. 
Matthew's chapter 11, verse 28, he, he, he gives a invitation to them. He said, come unto me, all, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, he said, and I will give you rest. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a superb invitation. Because, because when you're an unbeliever or you are, are, are living a sinful life, you, you're actually going through it. Amen. 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 If, you, if, if you're doing all kinds of illegal things, you are dodging the police. You're looking behind you all the time. Right. You know, you got so much, you know, you, you can't even, you really can't sleep comfortably because you're worried whether or not you're going to hear that knock on the door. And Jesus' invitation says, come to me, all ye that labor, right? labor striving to try to make it in this world, trying to please God, trying to do all these things, all you that labor and heavy laden, got so much burden on you, amen, you, you're having these arguments and stuff because you're burdened down, amen, you, you're in debt. You, when you when you're in debt, when you when when you got you got, I mean you got more debt than you got money coming in. Amen. It, it, it makes things uncomfortable for you. Amen. amen. You can really can't enjoy yourself because you pay out more. Amen. More than you bring it in. So he said, "Heaven, lady." He said, "And I will give you give you rest." Amen. And that's what that's what Jesus wanted to do. He wanted to give, give the world rest. But the world would not accept Christ Jesus because this world we're living in, amen, is controlled by the prince of the air. And he's controlling things. And he's he's doing he's doing the jam up job. Amen. Because if you if you see how the things are the technology have changed. You follow what I'm saying? If you if you take a if you take a opportunity to go down to the riverfront, you see people walking with their heads down in their phone. Amen. Amen. They're not looking up to see what they're going to be. Their heads are down in their phones walking. Amen. They'll look up because they don't want to hear nothing. But they have shown some videos where people have been walking and walked into poles. Actually walked in front of cars. So, so this we, we're driven. We're driven. I, I find myself too. When when I jump into my truck, I get my pocket to see if I got my phone. Because I don't want to miss a call. And I have to turn back around and go back and get it. Because I'm feeling uncomfortable because I don't have a phone. And this 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 is the world we live in. So, so we have to be very conscious of, of the time where we're living in because now that we're living, we're living in a time where our young people, amen, they are learning a whole lot more than what we learned when we was coming through there. Yeah. We've, done, we've done our thing, right? But they learn a whole lot more because they can, they can just scroll, amen, they can reach and pull things up when we couldn't pull things up. We, I mean, you know, like if we have a, a school fight, we we have to learn where the word of mouth about the school fight. But now they post it. They post it. <laughs> so you you know quickly about what, what what's happening. So this we live in a world so so inst you get information so instantly coming to us. Amen. So we have to be very careful. Amen. We got to be very precise about how, what we share about the good news of Jesus Christ. We, we have to know our Bible. And, and, if, and if we have to be very selective to the scriptures that we choose to share in our Bible, we have to be very comfortable with those selections of those scriptures that we are sharing. Don't, don't try to bite off more Amen. That you can choose. Don't go to a, a difficult passage of scripture and try to explain it if you haven't researched it and studied it. Amen. Because you never know who you're talking to. That person 
might be a little bit more fine-tuned in, in Scripture than you are. <laughs> Does that make myself clear? Amen. So, so the Hebrew writer here, he's warning the Jewish converts of the dangers of turning away from Christ's saving, saving grace. Amen. And, and those who reject, will, amen, will, will lead to destruction because they're rejecting, amen, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that's what we have, that's what we have today. When the message is communicated, it is given out of love. And from, from whatever parts of the Bible we choose to communicate or to share the good news, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, it is for our good. Amen. Amen. Everything that Christ Jesus has done, he done it out of love. Amen. Amen. And it seems like it should be what we should be able to do. When you when you fail to hear and fail to believe the word of God, then you actually you actually are rejecting what you hear. Amen. God want us to want us to believe, Amen, what we read and receive. Because hearing God will lead us to believe it. Amen. Let's go to James chapter one. Verses 22 and 23. Look what James says here. Are you there? He said, be what? Doers. Doers of the word. Doers of the word. So when, when, whatever you read, you, you got to be doers of the word. Right? Be doers of the word and not hearers only. So you have to put some things into play when you're reading God's word. Right? And not hearers only. Because if, you, if you're just a hearer and you're not a doer, he said you're deceiving your own self. Mm -hmm. If you just read his word and, and you don't apply your word, first of all, when you're reading God's word, you got to apply that word to your life. You have, to, you have to read it as though he's speaking directly to you. This, in, in some cases, you have, to, you have to read out loud where it come, bounces off the pages, go into your ear gate until it enters into your heart. And once it enters into your heart, it's there so that the enemy can't snatch it from you. Then verse 23 said, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man Beholding his natural face in a glass. Amen. And, and let, let me bring, let me just snatch that out of, and not complete that out of context because I'm, I'm going to place it in a place where I want you to understand about the rest. You say you trust in God. You say you believe in God. You say you have faith in God. And then the moment circumstances come, where you at? You understand what I'm saying? Don't forget. Huh? Don't forget the word. Forget. Yeah. You, you, you're in a different place now. Let me, let me, let me, be, let me domesticate this thing. Right? Here you are, right? Your, your better half and you are in. You, you don't, you, you forget what you don't learn. Right? You're not trusting in what you learn. Right? You, you, you get in the moment. You, you see what I'm saying? Because the word of God said, be angry but sin not. But we, we go past that, right, and enter into the anger part, right, and we get frustrated and what we do, we go home to sleep. We go home to sleep and and Lord's will, we pick that thing up in the moment. <laughs> yeah, we just put it on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you feel what I'm saying? Amen. So, so, so what I'm saying, as I'm saying to you, and, and those who's watching, viewing us, is this: God has given us principles, mm -hmm. so that those principles we can apply those principles to our lives, but we don't apply the principles. We, we handle them all ourselves. And so, so instead of us 
resting and allow him to take over, we, we take it out of his hand and we start doing it ourselves. We, we're, not, we're not trusting or believing in his rest that he has for us. He says this. He said, I am a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. This, this is scripture. You can apply that to your life. He said, I'm there. The moment trouble shows up, I'm there. But what, but what we do, we involve ourselves in the midst of trouble, right? Causing him not to get involved in it because we already know stepped in it and trying to handle it. This is trying to get in the middle of me and some full of fighting. We just fight, you know, carrying on. You try to get in the middle of it, then we turn on you because you. <laughs> Not, not trusting, not trusting in the word. He said, like a man, the hole in his natural face in the glass. He, he actually forgot that he washed his face. He got dirt on his face. Mm -hmm. He see the dirt on his face, but he, he, he don't see it. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. now, let, let, go over to uh, uh, the second chapter of James, verse 17 and 18. Look what he said. Even so, faith if it has not works, it's what? Yeah. Just not intellectual. Just not intellectual. He ain't asking for your intellectual. He ain't asking for all your college degree. He's just asking you to trust and believe. That, that, that's all God asks us to do. He said, even so, faith, if it has not works, it's dead, being alone. You've got to have something else with it. Right? The, the, the 18... Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have work. Show me thy faith without thy works. And, and I'm, sh I'm sharing with you today, there's a whole lot of whole lot of believers, and I'm using the word believers more so than I'm saying Christian, because you're a believer. Because Christ did not come to form a religion. He, he come to he come to build a kingdom. Amen. We're kingdom kids. So the whole lot of believers who, who say they believe, but they show no signs. They show no signs. Even, even those who struggle, right? Struggling to make ends meet. There's so much job opportunities out here for those who are struggling. Amen. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in, in, in a lifetime. $21. They're paying you $2,000 just to sign up. <laughs> Go sign up and get the $2,000. Stay a while. <laughs> Man, this unheard. It's unprecedented. <laughs> Amen. How are things are going today? <laughs> but, but, but see, we live in a world now that they, they they're more for fashion, they're more for show. Amen. They want to be a part of the the, the, what's going on, the, the, the scene that's going on in, in the world, and they, they ain't caring about house, shelter, lights, and water. That's last. Right? They, that, that's last on their list. And that's, that's the main thing that uh, a, a family should be concerned with. A roof over your head. Food on your table. And you gotta have lights on because if you ain't got lights on, you, 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 yeah, your food in the refrigerator won't spoil. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so they're not concerned with that. Many people here, many messages even, even have read their Bibles, but they have not responded in faith to what they have read. They they can sit up on all kind of messages. They want to they want to hear the fancy preaching. Fancy preaching. They, they love the fancy preaching yeah. because that stirs them up. Yeah. But when you're stirring up and going on, you ain't hearing nothing. Mm -hmm. You can't be hearing nothing if you're stirring up. Mm -hmm. You're missing some content <laughs> if you're stirring up because you, you, you're missing something. I can see I can see you carrying on from a song you get carrying on, but when the mess is going, and you, you, 
You're missing something. Now, I don't know if that's the Holy Ghost. I don't know if the Holy Ghost got you running like that. The Holy Ghost wants you to hear something. All right. Okay. Now you with me? All right. Listen, now, look at verse, verse 3. Go back to verse 3. He says, the Hebrew writer confessed that he has accepted the word of God and have entered into God's sovereign rest given by God. Look what he said. For we, for we which have believed do enter into rest. That's a common behind that. That's his confession. He, he's writing that, writing that to the Jewish Christian. The, the Jew, potential Jews converting over to Christianity. He said, but we for we which have it believed do enter into rest. Right? And he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, all of the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He mixes, he mixes this, amen, with the creation, what God does in the creation. What God does in the creation. He created the world. But on the seventh day, he rests. Right? Not only did he rest, but he, he put it into law. He said, a Sabbath rest. It's a Sabbath rest for man to rest. This is what he does. He, he mixes it, he mixes it, mixing, amen, eternal rest with what God had done, amen, from the foundation of the world. When he created the world, he rested. Amen. And so when he and he said here, we don't believe, we have believed. So I believe I have already entered into the rest. Yeah. You gotta have this mentality, this mental capacity to believe that I already entered into this rest. So regardless of what happened, I'm already rested in my Savior. He's gonna protect me because he's a very present help of time of trouble. I know if, if if I die before he comes, I'm gonna I'm gonna have he gonna, I'm gonna have eternal life. So I'm in a win win situation. What? He goes then he leaves that part and he talks about how God has created the world and entered into His rest when He finished it from the foundation of the world. Amen. He finished it. Not only that, but He actually put this. From the foundation of the world, he actually saw us. Because he said, even before the foundation, he said, we was yet sinners. Right? right? Even before he found, even before he created the world, he made a way for us to return back to him. Amen. Amen. Amen son. That's how sovereign he is. He, he already had a sovereign plan, a saving plan for humanity. Right. When he when he created Adam, right, he created Adam, and, and he knew he knew that Adam was was going to be disobedient. That's why he told Adam. He said, "Adam, you you got the run of the you got the run of the God. Do what you want to do." But that's one thing. That's one trick over there. You ever you ever try your children? Try. Them? You can tell them do that same thing. You, you, you can play with everything you want to play with. But don't go touch that thing over there. That's the first thing they're going to do. Because the curiosity says there is something about that over there that they don't want me to see. Right? And I'm going to go over there and I'm going to see. Right? And the very thing we had, well, we started with Eve. Amen. Amen. But Eve, amen. Eve was beguiled by Satan. And, and because Adam loved Eve, he bit, he ate from the bit, bit of tree itself. And so sin entered into the world. And because sin entered the world, amen, for one man's sin, a whole, whole world is dying because of one man's sin. But because of one man who, who died on the cross, we now can be saved. Humanity can be saved because of one man. Amen? Notice, notice what he said. He says, we which have believed do enter and have already entered in God's saving, I mean, sovereign rest. 
You got to believe it. The key here is believing again. The key here is believing. Because believing is, is much of a task that most people really don't think that it is. But it is much of a task. Because they ask Jesus, what's the worst? When Jesus was teaching, he said, what's, what, what is the worst? He said, believe in the Son. That's the work that God called us to do. Amen. Amen. I want to go to Mark chapter 11. Because if you could believe it, you will receive it. And, that, and that's the principle pertaining to receiving every promise of God. You can believe it, you can definitely receive it. That's how belief, belief it plays a, a major part in our walk with the Lord. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. And this, this is where they sing the fig trees right up. They asked Jesus, what happened? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and Jesus tells them what, what happened. But he tells them, you can do it too. He says, well, verily I said to you that whatsoever shall say unto the mount, this mountain, be thou removed, and, it, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, you can believe it. If you believe it, you can't receive it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the next one. You know how far away from that principle people are from that, that verse there? Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're so far from, from that principle applying in their life because they can't get to the belief. <clears throat> Let's call them doubt answers. Doubt answers. Right. And why do doubt answers? That's part of human nature. No, well, the flesh of the nature, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because, because, it because, because of sin. It's one of the by Down the line, it's one of the byproducts of sin. You yeah. got doubt. Right. Right. Can, let me throw another example in with, with you, brother. Of the day. Yeah. Before you learn how to drive, mm -hmm. and and you got up on the wheel, did you know that you could drive? Yeah, that that it's going to work out. Yeah. It's something that you hadn't done before. Right. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Something that you have not done before, you have doubt whether or not it will work. See, that's what that's what faith is. Right. Yeah, that's what faith comes in. See, again, I'm going back to the same point. Faith is not an intellectual thing. Right? right? That's why I think that Hebrew, Hebrew 11 and 1. What, how, the, how is that quoted? Faith of who? Faith without works, but faith is. I'm sorry, put your spot A one. Things well, and what the evidence of things not saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you got it now, right? So that's that's one one verse. That's one scripture that we should all have down back. He said, "Now, I think that word now. I mean, in the, in the now, right? it's a now word. Yeah, I mean, you won't see the now. The now word is not going to show up in Hebrew writing, right?" Right, it's, but he's but he said, "Is he now faith is yes. the substance of things hope for? You don't see it, but you're hoping for it. What 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 keeps the hope alive? What is is your faith? Is the hope is the expectancy to receive something? And so this verse here." Rather, it works with people because they have not actually stepped out on faith to try it. Am I making this sense to because, you? Because you have to be all in to believe in God's word. If you're all in, believe in God's word. Now, here's another thing that hinders us. When you got a headache, what you do? Take a 
<laughs> That's your choice of good. You take a child off, right? So, so what I'm saying is you're accustomed to doing something else first than putting than, than allow him to do. So, so, so this verse here, when he says, he says to speak, you can speak to a mountain, right? He, he not actually literally saying you can go to Lookout Mountain and tell Lookout Mountain to move. But God can, he actually can do it. But, but he's, he's not saying literally you can speak to mountain. But there are mountains of things that disturbs our soul. Disturb who we are as a person. But you can speak to it. When you speak to it, you have to speak with authority. That's when you believe something, you can speak with authority. You ever argue with somebody, somebody do something that you know is right? And somebody that's trying to tell you it's wrong, you know it's right? You argue at that point. You might get a little loud, but you argue at that point. Because you know what is right. It's the same with same with belief. Belief. So, so when you speak to when you speak to the, the mountain or the circumstances in your life, you speaking with authority. What authority? In Jesus Christ. He's, James says last Wednesday. He said we're more than conquerors. Not only are we more than comfortable, but we have someone whose house inside of us make us greater than that thing that's in the world. What's ever out of the world, we have something housed inside of us that's much greater. And what's his name? Holy, 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 holy spirit. He's greater. He's greater. Actually, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit is in works now. He, he's more in works in, 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 in what we do in our gathering than we cannot ever imagine. Because this is what Jesus said. When his ministry was about to come to an end, he said to him, he says, he says to them, it's expedient that I go. For if I don't go, he, he would not come. So the Holy Spirit ministry is, is right now is in dispensation is involved within the church because he's keeping us. He's keeping us. Right? In the book of Ephesians, he said, we're sealed. We got a seal on our heads. A seal on us. It's an earnest, it's a, like an earnest payment that's already been paid. Jesus has already died on the cross. He made the payment. For all who would believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, all right. So, 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 so that payment, that means that we are part of the heavenly kingdom. So when you say, once saved, always saved, yes, you saved. But there's a whole lot of benefit that comes along with your salvation. Amen. That a lot of believers are not sharing in with the benefits. Amen. Why? Because they're not in the word of God. There's some time. There's some time. There's some time. You know, you have to be all in. That's why that one don't work. Then what's the next one? Twenty-four. Is it twenty-four? This is this is this is what Jesus said. Therefore, I say unto you, He's speaking with authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all hear me on Facebook? He's speaking with authority. He said, Therefore, I say it unto you. What things soever you desire, mm -hmm. when you pray, believe mm -hmm. that you receive. Right? Receive them, whatever it is. And you shall what? Yeah. You, that's, it, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. but, but we don't think that part, it don't really. really Resonate with them mm -hmm. because they don't really believe. believe. They they believe. I mean, if a person who says they are saved should never say in a conversation with someone who asks them, "Are they saved?" I'm hoping I'm saved. Mm -hmm. 
There shouldn't be a conversation. There shouldn't be a part of your conversation. They do say that. I hope I'm saying. Then that will that leaves a door open for you to challenge them or to share with them about their hope. See, I mean that hope is an expected hope. Maybe something happening in our life where they don't feel as if they're worthy uh, of, of the soul salvation that Christ Jesus has died for. And that could be possible. Maybe whatever they're involved in right now, they don't feel as if they're worthy of, of, of God's saving grace. We never, we never know, you know why they say that, but those of us who, who learn and, and, and are learned, we know it's not a hope, but we know. I know I'm saying. How do you know I'm saying? I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe God rose him from the dead. I believe he came and died for me. You see, and I'm speaking that with authority. You see, with confidence. Even, even on your sickbed, you have to have that same confidence. When you speak to when you speak to children, I'm all right. I'm all right. Amen. Okay, amen. I want to go back to the, the can I go back to three three B? That's the latter latter end of, of verse three of chapter four. Yeah. He says. Look what, in the level, he, he reveals that God's wrath is made, he made a vow. He made a vow that they who reject his saving rest would never enter into God's eternal rest. And, that he's, and the reason he, reason he said that, it might have been four. Yeah. Yeah, he, right in three, he says, he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they should enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Right? He, he, he actually said, even though I've already made a plan for the soul salvation and they refuse it, right? They refuse to accept it, he said they will not enter in. Amen. A lot of folks really don't really don't grab hold of that. And, and actually, actually, you'll spend eternity either two places, in heaven or in heaven. Yeah. Amen. And I prefer, he preferred that none should perish. Mm -hmm. This is God desire that none, none should perish. Amen. That's his desire. But, I, but as, as the preacher said, hell have enlarged itself. And, and, and this, so many are, are wanting to go. It seems like, amen, they are, they are wanting to go. They are refusing or rejecting Jesus Christ. Amen. Satan has Satan fooled them, amen, that there are no hell. Let me hit this. Let me hit this fourth verse, and I, I, I know when Jack made to get through it. Let me hit the number four. Number four. Four say, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from his from his rest. Right. The, the rest represents, amen, in the present time, peace that pass all understanding. God rests from his works. He looked back and he said, everything that he done, he said, it's good. Very good. Every, every day that he began to create something, he says, good and very good. Uh, Pastor, Pastor, uh, Lester says that he says morning, he said evening and morning was the first day 
he says that it started from the evening until the morning is is a day. In the Hebrew calendar, it is evening to morning is a day. You follow? It's not wasn't a twenty four hour cycle from evening to morning. Because if you notice that the creation in Genesis say from evening to morning. And as he began to create the world, everything that he done, he said it was very good. Amen. So the, the rest in our present day, as God had rested from his labor, we rest from the labor of trying to please him. We rest from trying to keep the law. We rest trying to please folks. Amen. We rest from, from the trials and tribulations that comes our way. We don't get all upset, all embodied, all out, out of way, out of shape. We know he's going to handle it. Then we pull into place, and, and we pull into place just one thing. All things work together for the good. Man, if we can just we just get the family, church family, just just jump on that principle. All things work together. It's gonna to start if it start out bad, it'll wind up good. Again, it ain't gonna feel good while it's working. Amen. But at the end, it's gonna work out for your good. Amen. Right? And then and the divine principle is that them that love the Lord and call according to his, his principle. Right. Amen. I don't want you to when you go home tonight and be prepared next week. The Lord just delay is coming and the creek don't rise. I want you to actually look at the verse 5, 6, 7, and they read that. Because he comes back and reiterates what he has said from, from, the, from the start. And, and he's sitting it very hard because he wants he want the Christians, he wants the Jewish to understand. That this rest, this salvation that God has provided for us is for real. Amen. He's serious about it. We, once we get it down packed, we'll be able to we be able to articulate or help someone or to share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone else. And, and then, then if they ask you, what, then why do I need to be saved? Well, you don't want to go to hell. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Those those missionaries. They used to show up down on Market Street and Broad Street, and they had a lot of them during that time. And they, they would stop folks and, and ask them, if you should die today, where will you spend eternity? And a lot of times they would provoke uh, uh, curiosity for that person because they really couldn't give you an answer. And that opened a door for a conversation or to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So we want to pick it up, amen, on verse Go back to verse 4, and we, we, we'll finish it up next week if the Lord shall will it. Amen. Don't forget those that are viewing us by Facebook. Come and be with us in person. We'd love to see your face. Come and help celebrate our worship. Amen. This kind of Sunday. Amen. If we show our appreciation for the work that they have done and the work that they are continuing doing. And if you can't join us for Sunday school, you can join us on our YouTube channel, First Baptist Church of Washington YouTube channel, at 8 o'clock. Our superintendent will be teaching on our Sunday school. I think this is the last Sunday school lesson of this quarter. And we'll pick it up, amen, in September, a new quarter. Amen. If you can't watch it, amen, you can view it at any time. Amen. amen. Then come come right here at 9, at 1030, we go right into morning worship. Amen. Where we praise and give God all the glory. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to teach. We thank you for those who's attended tonight. We pray, O oh God, that your loving care and your loving mercy will continue to cover them. We pray, Lord God, continually as we touch and agree. Lord God, those that are in the hospital, those that are home sick, that you continue to heal their bodies. Give them the strength they need to make it through another day. And Father, we love you and we thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.